Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going through our full home office setup, going from our gaming setup to the 3D print station and also our racing simulator. So I'm going to take you through each area that we have in our home office, show you a little bit about the products within each one and why we picked the sort of products that we have. Um, I won't be going into too much detail about each individual product as such, um, because otherwise this video will go on for a good few hours. I just want, kind of want to show you a full tour. So let's get into the video. So first of all, I'm going to go through the 3D printing station that we've got in our home office. Um, we've recently changed from the Creality S1 Pros to a Bamboo Labs P1S. We made this change mainly for the AMS unit, which allows us to do multicolored printing. We've also added a sort of small riser and LED light bar to our P1S. That's not a sort of factory fitted option. Um, just to allow for better time lapses, etc. The AMS unit, as I say, allows us to do multicolored prints, such as this one here, which we got from Colts, I believe. Um, we've got a IKEA SCADIS board on the wall there with some filament holders. So everything you see here is 3D printed. All of these little tubs and the actual brackets themselves. Got a bit of a selection of some different colored filaments there. Um, and then we have in each of these drawers all of the tools. So all of these tubs again have been printed to fit each sort of a selection of tools, bits that we need, so like the heat gun, etc. So this just allows us to keep this area nice and neat um, for when we're sort of creating prints. Obviously, a lot of printing products will need sort of trimming, removal of the supports, or maybe a bit of a heat gun to sort of iron out some of the small defects that do unfortunately happen. In the corner, we've got some of the wall panelling with the Govi lights. We made a small video about this on our social media. It's become a really, really popular thing to add these Govi desk lights into the panelling. But I think it just looks brilliant, really sets off this corner of the room quite well. Originally, the printer was supposed to be over here, but it just sort of didn't work. It, it's far too big. Um, it's got the same footprint as the Ender printers but the Bamboo Labs printer stands a lot taller. Uh, it just didn't quite look right. Hence why we've got the extension of the desk there. Long-term goal, hopefully, is to get another printer as well, but currently we're not using it enough to justify that. So I say really happy with the Bamboo Labs printer. Anyone who wants to get into 3D printing, I'd highly suggest investing in the Bamboo Labs from the offset. I had two of the Creality printers, which would have cost nearly the same amount as the Bamboo Labs, um, but they were just so, so difficult to use. And I just, I think the Bamboo Labs offers a much better user experience, especially with the flexibility of the AMS unit there. As I say, allows you to create much better prints. We have recently set up a small business on Etsy, trying to just generate a little bit of extra income which helps with these videos um, and to buy more products to review and unbox, etc. So if we just shoot round to the other side of the room, you'll just see in this cupboard here, we have a selection of packaging materials and some storage tubs for various prints that we sell on Etsy. So I did a lot of trial prints um, and also ones so we could photograph each of the products. So they all just sort of live away in there now and are all li listed on our store. We've only had one or two sales so far, so hopefully that picks up and will eventually fund the second printer is the idea, but we'll see how that goes. Um, just on the wall there, we have our track car from our trip to the Nürburgring this year. I think um, got to be displayed well into my cars as well. So got my previous RS3 just up on the shelf there as well. So I say that's the sort of small 3D printing area that we've got along with the business. So let's jump into the next area of the room, which will be our gaming setup. So I say just moving around the room there to our main desk setup. This is where we first really started off. Originally, this desk was only sort of where that leg is now. Um, and then the simulator was just on this side. But we have recently rejigged the room this year just to expand and add a lot more parts into the sort of build so to speak so we have the lian lee 011 dynamic with 12 of their infinity fans so we've got the nzxt radiator just sandwiched between six of the fans on the back there we've got the ryzen 9 7900x cpu 
32 gigs of Corsair Dominator DDR5, all paired with the Palette Game Rock 4080 graphics card. Full custom build by ourselves, possibly one of the best builds I've put together. Absolutely chuffed with the way it's come out. A little bit gutted that we can't get a better colour match from the Palette RGB there on their graphics card in comparison to the Lian Lee fans, but realistically you don't tend to notice it too much but it's a shame we can't sort of like i say match that color a bit better um working our way onto the desk we've got a selection of logitech and elgato peripherals so we've got the g502 mouse and the g915 tkl keyboard along with the g560 rgb speakers there we then got the stream deck sorry um, absolutely love these, couldn't be without them. Um, I mainly just use them for shortcuts rather than anything else. So all of my games and apps, I just launch straight from there at a click of a button or two. I find it much more convenient than sort of going through your search bar or having your desktop littered with applications. Um, we've also got the Elgato webcam up there and the Wave microphone, which is all mounted onto their boom arm and then down. Got the key light as well, which we use for streaming. Um, still waiting to get a bit more confident with the streaming. Uh, it's not really something I've gone too far into yet. I, I want to work out a little bit more about how to set it up properly before I sort of throw myself in at the deep end with it. A lot of the videos I've watched have just said, just jump in and go for it. The longer you spend researching and looking at it, the longer you'll put yourself off. So I think this is something that I will aim to push myself towards sometime in the new year. As we've already sort of gone through, just a small shelf on the top with some decorational bits. Probably need a few more things up here. So we've got some of our 3D prints, some pictures, um, one of our original steering wheels, which a friend actually 3D printed for us. So I've kept that one as a bit of a memo from, that was actually from our first ever race simulator. And I say two of what was our first 3D prints on the shelf there. So I'll be keeping those for myself. Another one of the IKEA boards, so that houses just a few cables, some tools for the simulator, and our headphones, which are the Steel Series Arctis Wireless. And we've got the small control just for those on there as well. So it's a not a massive amount to kind of go into on the desk, um, but it's taken a very long time to put this together. Monitor wise, I've gone with the Alienware 34. D, sorry, 3423DW, um, first time spending a sort of considerable amount of money on a display or what I deemed as a lot of money. Normally I would have just gone for a sort of mid-tier, but when you pair it with such a beast of a PC, it seemed a shame not to go with a top-end display. Super, super happy with this. I would never ever go back to an entry-level display again. Um, for our side one there, we've got a MSI 272, I believe it is. What we normally do with this screen is just a split it in half. So we'll have, say, YouTube open on the top and Discord on the bottom. Just allows for a lot easier multitasking. So I say that's our main sort of gaming setup there. We've got the Secret Labs Titan chair. This is the... 2023 model i believe the xl had a couple of these chairs highly recommend them brilliant build quality super comfortable and they offer a great selection of sort of colorways or color schemes so they fit just about any setup yes there is better chairs out there for the money in terms of ergonomics and comfort but i say i i personally just really like these and just while we're on that topic i um want to go through the desk as well so the desk is built on the ikea nordil i believe the pronounced drawers and then we've taken some kitchen worktops from a local hardware store so this long section here for the main desk is around 2.8 meters from memory and then this section here is 1.6 so all we've done like i say is place those on top of the drawers and we've used some L brackets to secure them from the back. 
and then this section here where the cut line is we've also put some plates underneath that to secure that in so this is effectively one solid l-shaped desk i did add a small leg underneath when we originally built this desk the drawers on the right and then these drawers on the left were actually all the way into the corner so this leg was dead in the center but obviously it seemed a waste to effectively lose a set of drawers behind the other set so we shuffled them across um i've left the leg there for the support just to be on the safe side but realistically i'm probably going to take that out because i say it kind of offends my ocd a little bit with it not being dead central into the desk anymore but like i say it potentially serves a purpose so we'll see about that um to say that's pretty much most of the gaming area so Let's move around the room to the thing which I know everybody will be watching this video for, which is our race simulator. Like I say, this is probably the thing that a lot of people will be watching this video for. Everybody posts office tours, gaming setups, etc. But there's not many sort of race simulator tours, so to speak. Um, it's a bit more of a niche area for a few good reasons. Um, realistically i think monetary value is probably a big part of that you can piece together a gaming rig over sort of months or years however with race simulators that's sort of amplified times 10 they're extremely expensive and it's very very difficult to get in at the top end however that said there is so many companies now releasing sort of more entry level wheel bases or wheel rims pedal sets and frames it's becoming a lot more of an accessible market and I think that's great to see. I'm hoping that eventually we'll be able to get our hands on some of these units and sort of do reviews and tests for you. Um, obviously, we've only got our own setup here, so it becomes hard for us to kind of refer you or recommend products to you as we've never really tried them ourselves. So a bit of a breakdown for our simulator. As I say, it did actually used to be on the other side of the room where it was attached to this PC and we would run cables all the way along the skirting boards and into the simulator there. We originally had the Samsung G9 monitor, which is their super ultra wide. This worked great out of the box and I think was a really, really good experience and a great way to get into the sort of simulator racing. However, the G9 is limited in the way that it is, like I say, just one super wide monitor. By swapping that out for effectively four of the Samsung G5s, we've given ourselves a much higher level of immersion by increasing the screen real estate and also being able to wrap around the screens. We've had a fair few comments on our Instagram and TikTok or even Facebook, etc from people saying that the screen angle is far too aggressive, it's not realistic, you haven't calculated it. But my reply to a lot of those people has just simply been, put it how you want it, have your setup the way that makes you comfortable and where how you enjoy it. So people get so caught up on, you have to calculate your FOV based on these settings, you have to put your keyboard here, you, you have to hold your mouse this way up. And I just think, no, just, enjoy it how you want it it might not be strictly right and i'm sure there'll be people that will disagree but that's how i've decided to set this simulator up is trial and error of finding what i found comfortable and what worked with me when you are sat in the chair here um depending on which cars you're in obviously on which games the sort of corner of your seat lines up almost perfectly with the bucket seat within the game, providing you've positioned the screen and the FOV correctly. And I think this works really well. Um, when you're driving your real car, you look left and right, and that's kind of sort of how you're gonna glance across at your mirrors or across from the windows. So to me, that feels the most realistic. The only next step from there for a, a sort of increased level of immersion would be VR, but I'm not personally a big fan I wouldn't say it sort of possibly makes me motion sick as such, but I just don't find it the most comfortable. So that's why we opted for the triple screens. And then, as I say, we've actually got the fourth or quad screen on the top, which, as you can see there, you can use for statistics, lap times, etc. Um, you use the SimHub application for this. 
and that allows you to display various different information using preset sort of um, informational screens that people have developed. So you can say you can swap this out for different ones as well as. So our sim rig is built on the Track Racer TR80 frame. And this uses the integrated monitor mount, which it sort of attaches into your framework and then works its way up to the screens. We've then got the triple monitor arms, which just come across there. And um, the key nine among you would have spotted that we have actually swapped out this side of the track racer arm for a Simlabs pivot mount. So what this allows us to do is swing this screen out on a pivot so we can more easily access the race simulator. And then when you are in the rig, you'll just see this small handle here. So when you're, when you're sat down in the simulator, you can grab that handle and effectively swing the screen back in or close the door as, as such. So that allows, like I say, just easier access into the rig. So we have the track racer bucket seat there as well. And we have the PC shelf, which is holding our second custom build in the office. So that's in the John's bow case. And off the top of my head, I can't really remember the specs on this one. So I'll link it in the description. But from memory, it's the 5900X3D, a 4070 Ti, um, again with a NZXT AIO cooler. I think it was 32 gigs of RAM and two terabytes of storage in that one as well. This is a dedicated PC for the simulator. So everything is cable managed into the sim. So like you see, we've got the power brick there. So that powers the PC and the monitors. And then just underneath the pedal plate down there, you can just see a couple of the cables. So there's a 15 port USB hub and also a eight way extension lead. So the only cables that come actually physically away from the simulator is a single power cord. So everything else is managed within the framework. This allows us for easier maintenance because yes, admittedly it is extremely heavy. We can move the simulator away from the wall and away from the sort of cabinet there to allow maintenance or upgrades, etc. But everything else is all cable tied and sort of neatly managed in a way that we can work on it. So for the peripherals, I can never pronounce this, but we have the Husinkveld handbrake and sequential gear shifter. And then we also have the sprint pedals there as well. And then for the wheel base, we have the SimuCube Sport paired with the Cube Controls GT Sport, I believe it is, for the wheel. We've then got another stream deck, again, for quick access to applications, media controls, etc. And also the Logitech keyboard and mouse. Um, can't quite remember the model numbers on those ones. They are just sort of cheap and cheerful ones as they don't really get used a lot. As soon as you're sort of booted to PC, you're straight into the game. You're not realistically using them. They're just more there for convenience of setting up the game and changing your settings, etc. So they didn't need to be anything particularly fancy. Often they're not, people on their simulators will opt for a wireless keyboard with a built-on trackpad. So then you can just grab that, do what you need to do, and then throw it to one side again much cheaper alternative than going with the sort of fixed keyboard tray and the mouse tray. But I say I did that more for aesthetics and the cable management side, knowing that everything on the simulator is permanently wired in. Got another set of the G560 speakers just mounted up on either side of the monitor arm. Probably not the most optimal positioning because um, obviously they're sort of bouncing the sound off the back of the screens. I only really tend to use those when I've got friends over and we're all sort of in the office on the simulator and on the PC. Um, obviously that allows everybody to be enjoying the game rather than just one person wearing the headphones. But if I'm just on my own, I tend to put on a pair of headphones and sort of game that way instead. Much better immersion 
And as I say, with the placement of them speakers, it's not quite ideal. So moving down the arm here, we can see we've got the e-stop for the steering wheel. Should anything go wrong, you just need to bang that button and it will disable all of the torque steering and the sort of power output to your wheelbase. It's just a precautionary thing that the wheels are supplied with. And just underneath that, we have our amplifier, which you can see these sort of more copper cables here. We've got one that runs down under the seat and another one that feeds up to our pedal plate. These are paired with the Dayton Audio bass shakers. So what this does is it uses the SIM hub software and that talks through to your game that you're playing. And what it allows the bass shakers to do is take feedback from the game, convert that into a I think it's like an audio file, I believe. Don't sort of quote me on that. And that then translates into vibrations through the seat base and the pedal plate for things such as wheel slip, ABS lock, um, oversteer, understeer. So just allows you to gain more feedback through the simulator and get a bit of a more of a feel of what the car's doing. I've personally seen that the hardest thing to get to grips with on a simulator is sort of the perception of speed and the feedback. So the more immersion we can add into the simulator and the more feedback we can provide to our body, the sort of better I feel you would become. Naturally, you could spend £8,000 on a simulator such as this and have a Formula One driver using a 50 pound eBay wheel, they're gonna be better. Money doesn't make you faster, especially in sim racing, but you can do your bit to try and invest into the better products and give yourself a, a overall improved sort of experience with that. I think for what we've put into this simulator, I've probably gone a little bit too far with it. I don't really think I use it enough to justify what I've spent. I don't race competitively. I don't race in leagues. Um, I don't really even stream on here. Um, hopefully that is something we're looking at doing in the new year. But realistically at the minute, this is just used when a few friends come over. I don't even really go on it much myself. It kind of is a bit wasted. So if you're looking at investing into a simulator yourself, make sure you set yourself a budget, set something realistic and stick to it. Do your research on your parts and sort of spread your budget effectively rather than just jumping in at the deep end and sort of going for top end products that realistically you probably don't need to do. Um, my one piece of advice for starting off with sim racing, get a good cockpit first. So invest in something like a track racer or a sim labs frame. Obviously, you've got to make the decision of are you a formula style driver because their cockpits obviously are more of a lay down seated position. But if you if you pick the right framework, anything from there on can be adapted, changed and added to much easier than if we were to say, OK, this track race sort of frame isn't cutting it anymore. We would have to dismantle the entire rig, which would take literal days. So I say my piece of advice, just do your research and get the framework right first. And I think that will set you up for a sort of good experience with your sim racing. Just another thing that I've missed off there is we've got some more of the Govi LED kits just underneath as well, just to add a bit of lighting. So it's hard to see with the window open there, but like I say, you, you get the idea. It just adds a bit of sort of underglow to the race sim. So when all the office lights are on, it just uh, adds a nice backlight to that. Behind the simulator, we have some more of the wood panelling. Um, I'm really, really happy with how this one especially has finished off this corner of the room. Originally, this was just a sort of blank black wall. It just didn't look right, whereas with the wood there from the cabinets and also with the panelling, I think it's really sort of tied it all in together of this corner of the room. Just on top of the drawers there, we have our third IKEA pegboard. 
I think these are great, really, really versatile, and you can sort of do whatever you want with them. We've used this one for our GoPro camera kit, so everything's just by the door, ready to go. So it's just, if you know you're going out, say with the friends in the cars or a track day, grab the GoPro, you're straight out the door. Um, small battery charger there as well to make sure everything is juiced up, ready to go. So I say just a grab and go sort of concept with that one that everything is at an arm's reach where we need it. As I said in the start of the video, we've got the stock cabinet there just behind the door for our 3D printing stock. So that's sort of exclusively for the 3D printing business. And then we've got some drawers there, which are just full of crap, basically. Cables, uh, sim racing spares, just you name it. Anything that we've used to build the office, it's all just thrown in them drawers just for spares and bits we might need to change. So probably gone a little bit more into this video than I'd originally anticipated, but I wanted to try and give as much detail as possible without making this video sort of three or four days long. Um, if we were to give a review into every product and a tech spec of everything, there's almost definitely stuff I've missed off as well. The nano leaf lights there, I know I didn't mention, um, but I so say you, you get the idea as, as an overall office setup. I've, feel like we're so close to being how I wanted it to be. Um, this room as a whole over the last five years has been redone four or five times. It's gone from a spare room to an office, back to a spare room. Each time I've completely changed the desk setup. We had a desk across here and a spare bed there. We've had a desk here, the sim here. I've just changed it so many times. And finally, I'm so close to having it the way that I've got in my head. Not 100% happy about this corner with the sort of printing station. I feel this area of the desk on the right is a little bit wasted. As I say, this area is waiting on a second printer. But it's trial and error. We'll keep going and sort of keep progressing, making changes as we go. And hopefully we'll nearly be there. All of the products and links will be down in the description below. Any Amazon link that will be posted below will be an Amazon affiliate link. Now we do earn a very, very small percentage from any of these links. So if you were to say purchase a product, we do get a small kickback from Amazon. As much as this doesn't earn us a life-changing amount of money, it does help contribute towards the channel. I take any money earned from Amazon and put it in a separate bank account and I use that exclusively for purchasing new products whether that be for the home office or sort of solely for review and unboxing purposes or for like say for the simulator to make a video on so I say anyone that does take make a purchase from those links it is hugely appreciated and I will also pop a link to our Etsy store. So for anyone interested in 3D printed models, say for example, such as the Dragon on here, you will be able to pick those up. It is exclusively UK based and UK only shipping. So apologies if you don't fall under that category. If you've got any questions about anything we've covered in the video, or maybe anything that we've missed or that you would like to see, feel free to drop us a comment and I will try my best to get back to you with any answers I say for any questions. And I say, we'll keep progressing, keep working our way, hopefully improving on the videos each and every time. We've got some more camera equipment, um, which will be coming by the end of the year, new microphones to improve audio quality, streaming gear, all due by Christmas for the race sims, so that in the new year we can start to stream our races as well. So say 2023 has been the setup. It's been building this room, setting up the accounts, growing our followers. One of our Instagram reels recently hit over 1.3 million views, which was absolutely insane. I really wish we could hit those kind of numbers on YouTube to allow us to be monetized so that we can again put that money back into the videos. But that will come. I say 2023 has been the setup side for me, slowly learning and improving. So let's keep progressing from here and see what the next sort of 2024 will bring for us and the channel. 
super super excited so if you want to see more please hit that subscribe button say drop us a comment with any questions and thank you very much for watching the video and we'll see you in the next one